My channel is 10 years old and this is how it's going. I've been doing YouTube since I was literally nine years old and I'm turning 21 in about one week. Insane. I've been on YouTube for a decade, learned so much, but I also faced a lot of hardships and struggles. So we're going to talk about just that. I think the biggest thing that changed literally just from doing YouTube videos is where I live. I grew up in Washington near Portland, Oregon, and it was fucking cold. <laughs> and YouTube literally brought me from my small hometown to living in Los Angeles. And I pay for my own rent, despite the fact that a lot of my comments lately have been the fact that my dad pays for my rent, which I don't know where you guys get that from. Like literally you guys met my dad on my channel. We both are entrepreneurs, but I do make my own money. I think YouTube is so great because you can earn not only money from making content, but a lot of money. It's incredible. Like it's literally changed my life. I used to not even be able to afford my own healthcare growing up as a kid. So the fact that I can pay my own bills and my rent and my medical expenses has been life changing. I made a video all about how much money I've made on YouTube and like my earnings which you guys can check out below. But like from one year alone, I made 90K in just brand deals, which is not including AdSense and other income sources. That is amazing. And as a 20 year old right now, <laughs> I'm just so thankful. If you guys were wondering, my drink of the day is a Yerba Mate with orange juice and secret ingredient carrot juice. I know it's a little weird, but it's so good. Don't knock it till you try it. The second thing is because I'm a full-time content creator, I learned so much about personal finance, taxes, and just overall financial literacy, which is something you don't learn until literally you're out of school, you're making money, which is insane to me. I have learned so much about how to save money, how much I should allocate versus how much I should spend, how to invest my money into crypto and other financial assets. Because when you make your own money and especially on YouTube and social media, it can be inconsistent. So if you're not smart and you're not saving money in certain areas or investing in it, you could be broke, <laughs> which happens to me a lot actually. Like you guys know that I've been through a lot of bankruptcies as a YouTuber, but I've come back and that's because I save money. I save money, I put it in a high yield savings account and I let it grow. Unlike having a regular job, which by the way, I am not hating on, there are so many pros actually having a stable salary versus being a content creator where your salary literally changes every week and you don't get the same amount of money every month. I think because of that, you just become so much more savvy and knowledgeable about money and you're a lot more cautious about your money. Like when you make your own money as a creator, I think to a certain point, you know how much you spend. Like at least for me, I track everything and I know how much I spend, how much invest, how much I save because I have to do all these numbers in order to survive as a small business basically. And it's a great thing. Like you're empowered financially, right? When you know so much more, you are more empowered to keep going. Next, I learned so much about building a team. I think part of being a successful content creator is who you surround yourself and not doing it alone. There's this quote I think that goes, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It's an African proverb that I truly stand by. And one of the first things I made when I made my first $1,000 on YouTube AdSense is I just hired an editor. Building a team is such a hard thing to do just because you have to give up so much creative control. It's not like you just pay someone to do your work. No, it's like you literally have to give up most of your creative vision to someone else who you might not know very well Secondly, you have to be good at finances, right? Like you can't just hire an editor without knowing how much you make cash flow in your business or brand, right? So building a team is super complex and it's also about like management skills. Like how are you giving feedback? How are you training your editors? And right now my company, I have two editors, a videographer, editor, and also like a script writer, thumbnail person. I really think a lot of YouTubers are also great founders because part of running a company is just that you're hiring people, you're training people, you're doing cash flow management. Not all YouTubers are financially savvy. A lot of people go bankrupt, right? It's not about making a lot of money, it's about being smart about your money. I think building a team really teaches you how to manage that and how to be super responsible and how to put your team first before yourself sometimes, which can be super hard. There are some months where I have to pay my people, but I haven't paid myself. And you know, I'm maybe using my own savings, right? And it can be scary, but it just shows you diligence and hard work. 
And that leads us to the sponsored portion of today's video with VidIQ. Guys, if you're trying to build a team, right, and you're trying to grow your channel, VidIQ is the one-stop shop best date that you need. VidIQ is a browser extension that helps you grow your viewership. It's literally like an assistant plus a producer plus a YouTube manager all in one, okay? So let me show you more about how I personally use VidIQ to grow my channel and how you can use it to celebrate your team without spending thousands of dollars on hiring people. First thing is VidIQ provides channel audits, literally a channel audit tool. So you can audit your channel, how it's doing 24 seven. So you install the browser extension, right? And you can instantly see how your channel is performing. It shows you the views, subscribers gained, your watch time, and also shows you which content to double down on. It literally gives you a table of the videos you need to double down on and the things that are not performing that well. And like, what's so cool is like, as a creator and solo founder, basically, Sometimes you don't know what videos to make, but VidIQ literally tells you what kind of videos to keep going on. And it's all in this one feature you can check in anytime. VidIQ can also help you generate daily ideas that is using AI software to generate videos that will perform well. And guys, I use personally this tool and the ideas are freakishly good. I one time was really lost and the daily idea tool generated me a video about this one and it's now performing above average on my other posts. So thumbs up from me. And lastly, VidIQ can also help you with trend alerts. It literally gives you a notification if a trend is happening so you can jump on it so you can get more views, which is super helpful because as a creator, we might not have time to just search online and look at trends all day. And we might not have the money to hire a professional trend searcher, right? VidIQ is your bestie. You can download it for free by using my link below. Thank you VidIQ for sponsoring. I love you guys so much. All right, next is the network. I have literally made best friends with people who were my idols. People that I grew up watching now follow me online. And I know that sounds kind of vain, but I'm not talking like, oh my God, people with followers follow me back. It's not like that. It's more like really inspiring people are people I can call up and ask advice for because they are my friends and they do trust me, and we have a relationship together. For example, I grew up watching, literally religiously watching Adeline Morin. She's a huge YouTuber in the beauty and lifestyle space. She's also an entrepreneur and she literally recreated one of my videos. I will maybe link it below. And now we follow each other. This is like two years ago, but I would copy Adeline's videos and get inspired from her when I was in high school. And that is insane. Like sometimes whenever I'm down bad and I'm like, fuck my channel is like not growing. I have to realize like, it's not about followers. Sometimes it's about like the quality of people following you, right? If the people following you are people that inspire you, that means you're doing something right, right? That means they're inspired by you too. So don't forget that. Like sometimes we always look as creators at the numbers, but look at who's following you, not how many people are following you. I also find with this higher network, you're able to just have better dating life. I know this is not the case for everybody. I'm not saying dating people is easier if you're famous and rich. It's actually harder, but if you're ambitious and you're high achieving, you can make zero dollars, but still be high quality, right? If you have these traits, but it just, you attract so many more like-minded people and most of them are not great, right? Like most of the men that I've dated in the tech creator crypto space or awful. You can watch my dating video to see that, but I have an amazing boyfriend right now that I think I wouldn't have met if I wasn't in this mindset of, you know, being my own boss, being a creator, just because he's also like that. So we attract each other. I just think like you get higher quality men and it doesn't even need to be like, you have to be famous. Even if I had zero subscribers, I know people that don't have a lot of followers or a lot of like money from YouTube, but they're just, you know, ambitious and they're a go-getter and they have just a very high network of friends. So, you know, it's really not about the money. It's just kind of the mindset. You know, if you're trying to do something different, you're going to attract people who also are doing the same. All right. So now that you know a lot of the pros of being a YouTuber, we got to know the cons because this video is about how my channel is going in the past 10 years. And it wouldn't be a honest video without going over the things I've been personally struggling with as a content creator full time. The first con is working 24 seven, AKA having no weekends or no evenings to yourself. Really difficult for me to rest. 
if I'm laying in bed scrolling on social media, I feel like I'm wasting my time. I have to be making content. Being a full-time YouTuber is a privilege. You, you work from home, you travel all over the world, whatever, right? But you almost bring the sense of, I need to be working 24 seven to make up for the fact that I'm privileged. Doesn't make sense, right? Like if you are privileged, you should be using the money to help other people, maybe donate it. You don't need to guilt trip yourself into working more, right? And I struggle with this right now. Like I feel tired you know, of making content sometimes, not all the time, but it's a reality where like, I think it's so important as a creator to give yourself a break. Even if you don't think you need a break or you deserve it, you gotta get a break girl. Like, you know, you need to give yourself the space to rest because that's how you build long-term success. I think another thing too is views are so important as a creator where you might obsess over it to the point where you might not even like making content because it's not fun anymore. And you know, most of my income is through brand deals. And just to be very honest, I did a, you know, a brand deal earlier today, as you guys saw, I have to care about these viewership things and I can't just care about making the video for fun because being a full-time creator is about also delivering on what the brand would sponsor you. You know, you have to deliver results, which is such a great thing about my job. I love to work with brands, but I also feel a responsibility to keep up with these brands and make sure they're happy that they're paying me money. But I think a con of that is like, you just, I just have less freedom on what I want to make. I have to think about what is going to perform well. So I don't feel this way all the time, but it's just something to know where even if you are posting a video for fun and there's no money tied to it, you're going to still think about ways to optimize it versus just posting for fun. And sometimes you can overthink things and you can feel like you're not enough. I don't think it's a bad thing at all to work with brands and have to like care. And I'm not saying like the brands that sponsor me want me to perform 10x or also dropping me. That's not it. It's more of the self internal pressure for me to just be the best and perform the best just because everybody on social media looks like they're thriving and making so much money and, and having so many viewership. And I feel like I need the same. And it's just not true. You don't need to be on the same path as everybody. And you can make videos for fun. Even if it's not going to perform well, it's okay. You can still post it. The third thing is I think people just treat you differently once you're a creator. And it's not even like where people are kissing your ass and they're like, oh my God, you're so famous and cool. Like it's actually sometimes the opposite where people should talk to you behind your back. People would literally treat me like I'm a wannabe influencer. Like, oh my God, Jade is trying to be a YouTuber. She doesn't even make money on YouTube. Why would she be even be posting? And I know a lot of people get this and this is super normal for beginning creators to get feedback from their friends of saying it's dumb. If you're in that same boat, trust me, I've been there, it sucks. But you have to build really good internal thoughts about yourself to do YouTube. If you care a lot about what people think, it is so hard to start a channel. In a way, you learn how to build thicker skin, but it's still difficult. It's hard not to give a fuck about what people think. I was definitely hurt by it, but I learned and, and learned to grow and, and really focus on what I thought about myself versus what other people thought about myself. Lastly, I just can't watch YouTube like a normal person, okay? It is so hard for me to sit down and rest. This is like the same first point I brought up, but every time I'm going on YouTube, it feels like I'm doing market research on what I should make. I get a lot of anxiety online. Just literally being on social media gives me anxiety right now. Some days are better, some days are worse. Like this particular month has just been a lot for me. And I have a therapist that is helping me tremendously with my anxiety, but it's hard to read comments sometimes. I get kind of overwhelmed with analytics. Obviously, I love data. I talk a lot about viewership and growing your views, but at the same time, it's overwhelming. It's so scary, but you don't have to feel guilty if that's the case, right? You can be both productive using social media as a money maker, build your career, but also use social media and feel like it's overwhelming and that's okay. And I guess that's why I wanna make this video because I wanted to share, although social media is amazing and has literally moved me across multiple states, has allowed me to travel the world, social media is still scary for me till this day, but it's okay because that is the reality of building a brand. It means you're growing, right? If you're not scared, it means you're stagnant and you're not growing in your career. And I love the fact every day for work, I do not know what I'm doing. I enjoy being there for you guys and documenting my journey. And I hope this video has showed you a little bit more of the realities of being a creator and has helped you maybe feel heard in your journey or just 
give you more insight on what it's like. If you want to learn more about vidIQ, I will link it below. Thank you, vidIQ, for sponsoring and shout out to the comment winner. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. I will see you guys in the next one and I will hopefully see you on Instagram, TikTok, my podcast. These are other platforms you can find me and I love if you shoot me a message and say, hey.